I'm going to show you now how we do the eye and the eye surround the chocolate Labrador puppy. So this is going to be interesting. I'm starting off by using 170 grey and I'm going to put this on all the areas that are light or lightish. And I've got that little mark there to indicate where I have to stop. And that drops down there. And a little bit of, of grey in here just on that line actually. Okay. Now the other thing I'm going to use is um, a 273 and what that will do it will fill up all those areas in between. Now I'm working in the direction that I see the, the hair lying in and you probably a question going through your mind is if it's chocolate brown Colin why are you using greys? Well I think this is going to be obvious in the end because if you use brown directly onto this paper you'd end up with it too rich so what I'm doing in fact is laying a foundation that will quieten the ground down now while I'm chatting away to you I'm just looking at the reference picture and thinking right now I need some grey in here now. Now the two things can combine together so at some point in time we can do that. Okay, so we've got the, we get a, a little bit of fusion between them all. Now just inside there I'm going to put some white. All I'm doing here at the moment is setting up all the foundation all the base colours that I need. A little bit of white in there and just a little bit of white on top of the grey. And that's not as um, light as these areas. Now you decide whether to put the white on first or after. Okay. Now having done that I will then want to put some grey on top of the lighter grey just to tone it down a little bit more. And it's the same that goes for this. This will make a bit more sense in a minute. Okay, that's great. It's got very, very dark here, so I'm going to push a little bit more colour in to make it a little darker. Okay. Excellent. I'm not going to bother with the eye at the moment because that we'll do with separately. When I'll do that when I've done enough of the ice around so that it will give me an indication. I just see also um, a little bit more grey here. Oh, what colour coin? A bit more grey there. And I said I wasn't going to do the ice with the eye, but I'm just going to do that little section there. Right. Now we're going to do that. Oops, I've got a green colour shaper there. I mean, I've been fiddling around with. Okay, now what I'm going to do now is just put in the, still working in the direction that I see the hair lying in. I'm just going to put a bit of blending into it. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, that's fine. Now I've done that, that gives me a bit of base, I'm going to actually redo that again with the grey. This time you will see that it's a lot stronger and more compact than it was before. And also here is where we start thinking about bringing that colour back in. In other words, fusing it together more solidly. It's quite light down here, it's just there where it becomes quite dark. You'd be following, well you'll be following the reference picture that I'll give you, but I'm following a, a reference photograph here. And what I'm attempting to do is before I actually put the, the colours on, the browns on, I want to make sure that I've got enough base underneath it. So you know that's quite nice and strong. Now however much I press that brown the, the grey in, I'm not going to get it any darker than that. 
So now we've got to move to the next colour. And I'm going to use 169 here. Now 169 is like a grey, but it's sort of a mauvey grey. Now all photographs have got biases, and, I, and the, and the colour, the, the one I'm using here for a reference, has got this kind of like mauvey tint to it. Now, that doesn't happen to all chocolate brown Labradors, it just happens to be this one has got that bias. So I'm going to put that in. Now just there, this is where that is a little bit more obvious. Like that. That's it. Okay. Now, it's the first time we start thinking about brown. But what I'm going to use is 283. 283 is really chocolatey. I hope you can see that on the screen, now how it's coming up. So like a chocolatey, very attractive brown. Sort of ready brown really. Now if I if I show you just on another piece of paper, let me just show you what that would look like if I put that on your can you see that? Look at it close up to that. It's much too rich. This is a greyish looking brown and that's a very rich brown. So if I put that on first, it would have been too strong. Okay. Now I'm going to very, very gently put it across here. not very much, just so that we've got a colour in there. Great. Now we come back with our, our colour shaper and just blend that in. All, all the time we're working, I'm working in the direction that I see the hair lying in. You see that colour now has changed quite dramatically. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to, I didn't put colour on here, but what I've got, I've got colour on the um, colour shaper, so I can then transfer the colour from the colour shaper to give. See how it's working out? We've still got a long way to go, but these initial colours are very important. Now, I'm going to bring back a little bit of grey now, just because that is virtually finished. That's that's that little section there. That's the colour that I actually that I'm actually looking for. So that bit would be finished. As indeed with this round here, so I'll put a little bit more white on. So I've achieved that. What I haven't done is I haven't done that bit. Let's just finish that off. Now uh, you notice that there's quite a lot of um, Sorry, I didn't put that in there either. I should have done. I'll just pick that up. Too busy talking to you. I'm not concentrating. That's better. Now, you see there's quite a few um, areas where the pastel paper is shining through. Now, I've got to get rid of those. Because the next colour I'm going to put on is a very dark one. And I could end up with it touching that area where I don't want it to. So I'm just going over with colour shape to make sure that it looks good to me now. Good. Now we've got to go in with a darker colour. I'm going to use, um, I've got the ready brown, but now I'm going to use the rich 177, which is very much The really, this is the kind of the colour, almost the colour that we have. Now here I'm going to be a little bit more fussy about it because I want some of that under colour I've got in there to show through. I don't want to just completely annihilate the colour. So we're using it and grading back into there. Here again, I 
just there, it's very dark there. Uh, I should be putting a, uh, ultimately I'll be putting black on that as I turn and dig it on some of the other areas. Yeah. Now having got that, I'm now going to use the colour shaper yet again. This time with a lot more care and bringing a little more design into it. It's looking good. Still haven't reached the darkest colour yet. You can see how that's working out very nicely. Now we need to go darker than that. So I'm going to use 175. This most of this colour will, will stay on now. But you see now let me just show you once again I just 175 on there. You see the difference in colour. I hope you can pick it up on the screen. How, how harsh that is compared with that, which is, has got the same colour. And that's because we're using the base colour on this. That's great. That is looking very, very nice now. And a little bit of this up here, but I'm being pick, more picky now than I was before. Down here where it's very dark, as I said, I think I'll be putting a little bit of black on there in a little while. I'm not worried too much about this section because that will be taken care of when I do the eye. And just down here where I didn't put the brown in, which I should have done. I mean, it's, it's difficult when you're only doing a small area because this is really just an exercise for you. But ordinarily, you do, you'd be filling the whole animal in now, so you wouldn't just get a cut-off point like that. But uh, an exercise is just that. It's not designed to just go backtracking a little bit with the colours I've got, which you'll have to do to make sense of it. And again, a little bit of colour using the colour shaper. That's fine. No, well, you can't see it. That is very much the tone that I'm looking for on the ice around the animal. Good. Excellent. Now I need a little bit of black here, and I need it black in the very deepest part, which is there. Just there. And, that, and filters through to there. And here, where I was talking about earlier, it's very dark. So you, you notice I'm using the black on its on its side there. The idea is that if I use the point, you tend to compress the paper more. Now that's fine for the moment. As I said, all this will be picked up later when I do the eye. But all I'm concerned with at the moment is getting the eye surround looking good, and it, it is looking good. Why I do the eye surround first before the eye is so that it gives me a better idea when I come to complete the eye, it gives me the right tones. Now just a little bit of white on that just to liven it and I'm going to leave it at that for the time being, maybe just a touch more. You can put colour back in again you see and, and what I will do at the end of this demonstration, I will bring back in the rich Brown on that one. This one. This is the 283 I was looking at, and that will give me the overall tone, chocolate tone, which I'm looking for. I'll, I'll do it now for you. You can see how it's going to work. It's, it's not all over, it's just in places. So now we have a combination of colour, which is superb. Now we've got to do the eye itself. Now I'll prepare the groundwork for the eye by once again putting in white. The highlight and grey in the bottom half of the eye, and then on the top half, we're using 273. That comes in, and that actually will fade eventually. And there, so that goes in there. 
Now this is also 273. At the very bottom of the eye we have a darker area there. And we also got a little bit of a detail there. Now let me just put that in. I will put it in so that I know, I know where it is with my darker colour as well. This is the thing. I'm losing the pencils. Here we are. This is 177. Now it's darker there, but it's lighter there. Don't ask me why, it's just I'm following the reference picture here. And that will go up darker through there and then darker through there. Now we need to glade that down. Well, I've put the colour in. I need to fade it into the 270 grey underneath it. This is where you start getting the glassy look to the eye. Just there. Now, at the very centre of the eye itself, we cut around that highlight and put it in like that. That's quite strong. Now you should now start to see the eye looking at you. I need to put this on top. Now because we've got the grey 270 underneath that, the grey I'm putting on here will be weaker than, the, than that at the top there. Okay, good. Now, because I want to set that eye, I'm going to put, I'm going to use the brown again that I used before. This one. It's quite a diffused colour. So although you'll see that now quite strong, it won't end up like that. It'll be much more diffused than that. But I start off with... I'm sorry about that tinging. You probably can pick that up on the screen. I can't do anything about it. It's a, I've got a computer working over here and I can't turn it off. It's my son's. And it's binging away. You have to forgive me. Okay. So far so good. Now we've got now to work uh, on a green. Now I'm going to use this green, which is 172. It's really a greyish green and it's a really attractive colour. I hope you can start to see that eye emerge now. I'm going to bring it into there and I also want if I can find it my now we've got to find a, I've got a whole host of greens here I'm looking at. This is 167, which is a very attractive, another very attractive colour. Uh, this can go on top of that dark colour above. And it can also start to darken in there. Looking good, folks. I'm going to put black in the eye itself now, because I don't want to do too many colours inside that. But I've got to put the I've got to put that in because it then tells me what the next operation is, like around here. I can put it around there. I've already put brown on that and the grey under colour. Probably the darkest green I have, but I'm, I'm going to put in a slightly warmer green than the 167. This is 273. As I want to creep up on the depth of this, I'm going to put just a little touch of 283 in here as well. That's there. And then I'm going to use 181 if I can find it. Yes, I can. And 181. It's like a bluey grey, very dark bluey grey, Payne's grey. And there I'm going to use that to create much more depth. And then on top of that we now put the black. You see what I mean by fusing? It's very gradually you're starting to see this darken and darken and darken and I've still got a few tricks up my sleeve which 
I shall show you in a minute now. Just around that edge of that, I'm going to put in, not that one, I'm going to put in 283 if I can find it. 283, the one I've used on here. So I'm going to put that around the edge of the black, like that. And then we use the black again to deepen it still further. Don't worry about the fact that light's disappearing. I can bring that back. And then this is where the fusion comes in. I'm going to make sure it's dark at the top. Dark around there. But we've still got the pupil there, very strong, but it's sort of almost hidden now. Now we backtrack now with the colours that we've previously used. This is 273. This is a wonderful medium, pastel pencils. I've said many times before, if you just think of it, as long as you've got the experience, it's able to respond to you. Now I've got to find that other colour which I had earlier. This one. This is one six seven there. Pencil blending. Lovely. And then the colour that I first used, which I definitely lost. Completely lost. Oh no, I found it again. It was on the other side. And this is 172. 172 goes in. And because we had those all those light colours underneath, I'm able to make this respond as I wanted it to. Just grade it into there. You see where that fusion now? Just a little bit of light now, just in the very, very centre of this area here. Back with the colour I first used, which was one seventy, no, two seventy just to give me a little bit of light and uh, as I'm very fussy I will now put back in 2A3 just in here 2A3 just in the bottom there you are, what a beautiful eye Holly, superb now what we have to do now, because we've got that in there, we now need to bring that back, the colours I showed you earlier. So I'm going to start off by putting in a little 169. We've got to close in on this now and make this even more spectacular than it already is. So we bring that in there and there like that. And this can all be done quite, quite quickly now. One, one, Seven, seven. All the colours I've previously used, I'm, I'm bringing back into it. But what I want to do now is just to here, I just want to a little bit of grey and extend the grey. You just make it just a little more interesting, like that. Okay. And a little bit of black, because the black actually comes down to there. do is I, I, this is taking so much time I, I'm going to break off and I'm just going to just pick up some of these areas and then show you what I've done right I've just just tidied that up a little bit by smoothing some of the edges off now all I'm doing now is using the, the sharpened 273 just to need some of that back I didn't want it quite so strong as that and in there as well. So when you've got little areas like that, you can just put little touches of interest in it. That's 169 I use on top of the 173. And then my black, so I just 
Strengthen that a little bit more into there. Pull that down a little. Here all the little things you can do. And on here on this side here, I've got a 273 again. I've got to just that that was a little bit that black was too harsh against the edge of the light colour there. And then we want a little bit of black in here to Make that a little more acceptable. A little bit of black there, like that, because it's black all the way through here. Now, just you see, once you've got the eye in, you can then see quite clearly what you need to do. I need to come back in and then just grind, grind that out. Now, you can also use once you've got that on the you picked, picked up some of the colour, you can then use that almost really like a paintbrush just to make it look a little more acceptable like this round there, a little colour I can put some more white on that so I don't really mind too much if I make it just a touch darker I'm looking for shadows really, that's what I'm looking for just a little bit of... that's lovely now that is very close to the original picture that I've worked I've worked from now. And I don't there are a couple of little things I need to do and whoop, not that one. I need to find the white pencil and we need to just put that in again. Because it was there originally now it's it looks uh, superb. And then we can just do so a little bit of light on there. Just purely to you now just to add just a touch of design to it. It doesn't, it's not a lot around there, it stops when it goes to about there. And then the grey here just travels up a little further up there, and it almost just there you have a kind of breakthrough from there to there. As I say, this is only an exercise, so what we're doing here is just showing you just what you can do. And it's good fun. I would always recommend you have a crack at this yourself too. And otherwise too, any any help you can get really when you're dealing with a pastel pencil. Okay, now I'm just going to do what I did with the grey earlier. I'm just going to use the white pencil just to fade this out slightly around there. There you go. Right. <clears throat> I might do the whole dog one day. But you can see how nice that is. Well there folks, I think <clears throat> I've given you a really good idea of how you can put cut oh, just a little bit more. I've just seen this I've got pull back. I've just seen a little bit of extra. There you go. Yeah, I can fiddle and fiddle and fiddle all day, but I mustn't do that. <coughs> I think you'll agree that that looks superb, and, and I hope you have a go at it. It's a great exercise, and importantly, it, it's the chocolate colour that we're looking at. So if you could re rewind this uh, again and watch it again, you'll see how I achieved it.